Beletrina. Oživo. Marek Šindelka je jedan najbolj prepoznavnih čeških avtorjev, dobitnih večjih literarnih nagrad, eden od ljubljencev češkega bralstva, je svojo karjero pričel na praškem famuju, v literatura pa vstopil skozi poezijo. Poznan je po eksperimentiranju z literarnimi žanri, s kmalo po poeziji pa je nadaljeval za proznim ustvarjanjem, ki ga vedno odlikuje njegov poetični slok, jezik in izrazita skrb za detajle. Marek, hello, welcome to this conversation. Since material fatigue is your first Slovene translation, for the first question I would ask you to briefly introduce yourself to Slovene readers and also introduce your work. Okay, uh, so, well, actually I started uh, writing when I was maybe 16 years old or something, uh, and it was, uh, it was very on a purpose because I needed to uh, somehow to collect and uh, uh, my memories of childhood and, and uh, of growing, growing up with my brother, especially. Because when we were young, um, my brother, uh, he, he had a problem with drugs and uh, disappeared from my life for, for a while or uh, for a little bit longer than a while because it was 10 or 15 years maybe. But uh, I needed to somehow, uh, somehow to recollect all those memories of, of our childhood. So uh, that was my urge, my aim. Uh, so I, I actually didn't want to be a writer <laughs> in the first place. I, I just uh, felt, or maybe I was always somehow sensitive person. So I just felt that this could be a way how to do that, like, like how to organize my memories and, and so on. And uh, the outcome was uh, my first book, which was a compilation of poems called Strychnin, Strychnin. Uh, and uh, I, I thought it, it would be the end of it. Uh, like, like that was the, it, it, the aim was somehow uh, reached and, uh, and uh, I didn't want to continue, but somehow it, uh, it grew. Uh, inside me, this urge to tell stories, to write, and so on and so on, and then, uh, then I, then I uh, somehow managed to finish a novel, which was my second book, and uh, was uh, rather experimental. Uh, it was a rather experimental text, and then I continued with short stories and so on and so on. So, but the, that that was the. Uh, like ignition of the whole process, the, the poetry. Mm -hmm. In your work, it is quite noticeable that you're a really great observer of the society and also the problems in the society. Also, your novel, Material Fatigue, which was now just published in Slovenian language, tells the story of two brothers, refugees who had to escape their home to flee to Europe together, but they are separated uh, in the way. How did the idea uh, came to you to write a novel about that, that kind of subject? Uh, well, it was um, uh, it it uh, started with with a sense of uh, let's say shame. Uh, I was ashamed uh, in this in it was two thousand fifteen. And uh, you know, in in the Czech Republic, the situation was uh, almost dreamlike because we didn't have any refugees. It was strange, but people were uh, crazy about them. Like like uh, they were preparing themselves to war or something. It was it was uh, immediately it was uh, misused or abused by media and politicians, and uh, the atmosphere of of utter horror and fear was created uh, on this subject like like it was used as a political political currency or or something a, a topic which was immediately uh, you know useful for uh, our politicians so so people like my my uh, grandmother for example and uh, my cousin and other people from my family it was it was personal uh, were suddenly 
uh, scared to death. My, my cousin bought a gun and started uh, practicing gun shooting. And, and, uh, and uh, the fact was uh, there, there wasn't anyone to, you know, to uh, any, any, uh, any real refugee or, or uh, so, so I was somehow shocked how we were, uh, we were uh, fragile and, uh, and uh, uh, how, how naked we were when we were facing those media, like, like uh, how, how manip manipulative it was, the whole situation. And, uh, and also, it revealed many uh, many things about ourselves, uh, especially how, how we are ready to you know to not uh, not see other people as human beings in the first place. And I was in a way shocked because uh, back then I uh, my my daughter was born, uh, our first daughter, and uh, and she was a baby, like like a small toddler, and she was uh, a sort of growing up uh, with uh, alongside with the refugee crisis or so-called refugee crisis and uh, so it was very passionate for me uh, or I, I I was very sensitive for uh, all those things I don't know why exactly but I I, I uh, assume that uh, presume that that it, it had something to do with with my with me being a father like like suddenly and uh, then this strange uh, thing happened, and the, uh, the 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 terrible thing when when uh, uh, the the uh, lorry was discovered on the Austrian highway with seventy one people dead inside, suffocated, and um, uh, it was abandoned, and it was standing there for two days or something. It had been standing there and uh, and uh, it was full of dead people and for me suddenly i was i was like struck because it was it was so terrible uh, and and the the news uh, of this event came uh, on a very sunny day it was beautiful uh, summer day and uh, and then this this terrible uh, like terrible new uh, occurred and and uh, in a way people in Czech Republic were celebrating this like like that's great those people uh, won't uh, they, they uh, wouldn't bother us here so so the, the problem solved or things like that like like uh, terrible things and I, I suddenly felt a terrible urge to uh, or, or really a strong need to to somehow to tell something uh, to this in this debate or so so that was like like triggering point uh, of, of the the whole book and then it then it grow it grew somehow like like gradually uh, it, it started to evolve somehow yeah because the book came out uh, especially during the peak of the migrant crisis refugee crisis and among those 71 that people was also two year old girl that in that truck. Um, I have two questions regarding that. First, of course, is you mentioned several times in previous interviews that uh, material fatigue was also written out of the shame towards your own nation. Um, so how can you explain this, this kind of transformation like for example we know Czech Republic in the past being quite multi multicultural nation there is a lot of minorities in Prague and other cities uh, already from the commun uh, communist regime like for example Vietnamese and other groups Greeks in uh, Prague how come in a couple of years time actually the politics and the Visegrad group could poison the people minds so much that we, as people, don't have the empathy to another human being, and we are afraid of other in a way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, and in the first place, we used to be refugees. That's the that's the important thing because uh, during communist regime, our people and our best people, like like intellectuals and and writers and uh, whoever, 
uh, they they used to flee uh, from the country and and uh, they they sold for asylum in in other other European and uh, world countries and so uh, so we we have this tradition and but I don't know uh, for uh, for many people actually yes we we do have uh, some minorities like like Vietnamese as you mentioned uh, but. Uh, and uh we also uh we also accepted thousands of refugees in 90s from uh, during the you know uh, balkan uh, conflict uh f- from the former yugoslavia and, and so on and they were muslim people and and they are invisible in the society no problem at all they they are just just uh, perfect uh, citizens no problem whatsoever and and uh suddenly this uh, terrible change somehow happened and i i'm 100% sure it's a it's a, it's a work of populists of of uh, politicians because uh, this fear is uh, is artificially manufactured we we don't have any evidence of uh, the refugees they they didn't even want it to go to the czech republic they 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 uh, uh, they used it uh, just as a transit country, and uh, even even they try to, uh, to 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 uh, not not to stay here much longer because they they were perfectly aware about uh, the atmosphere, about uh, how how people would uh, treat them, and so on and so on. So they they basically wanted to go to some more uh, cultivated country. <laughs> That's strange. I, I talked to too many people like they they were scared about uh, Czech people which was that was the reason why I was ashamed you know mm-hmm. the, how 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 this and I don't blame normal people not at all that's that's not uh, about like like uh, uh, pointing a finger to someone you are bad people because they they're just normal people and they are of course they can be scared but uh, the one who uh, should be blamed for this is uh, our our politicians because they are pretty much aware about what's going on and then they they just used it uh, used the situation the the lives of those people their stories and so on was the, the, this was abused and um, and that was that that triggers triggered that anger or almost because it was an anger uh, I felt uh, back then and the, the book was initially i wanted just uh, i was somehow blinded by 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 those emotions so i initially wanted to write a very uh, dark book Uh, i just wanted to compose it as a as a description of uh, of the track of the of the car where they were locked those 70 people that was my first idea just write this book which would uh, make which would make people vomit almost like 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 something very uh, physical uh, claustrophobic just just 150 pages long book about uh, 30 minutes inside the the, the track like like uh, those people locked there oxygen is uh, decreasing and so on and so on and and uh, just this atmosphere but but it was uh, it wasn't feasible it wasn't uh, even for me like like i wrote like 20 pages but it wasn't possible to finish this book it would be terrible and and uh, so then i had this idea of two brothers which is as i mentioned this is something very uh something i'm very familiar with and uh, um and uh, i was able to invest some uh, some emotions and feeling uh, towards those people. Some something very, uh, very deep, uh, which I know perfectly well. Uh, searching the loved one, uh, searching a person who is very close to you, and uh, so I, I somehow that was my personal connection in this whole thing because I was uh, searching for my for my brother for years and uh, and uh, he was also an outcast somehow someone uh some someone who who was uh you know uh pushed away from the society and and he was seen as a as a as a 
not not a complete human being almost like like uh, because he was a drug addict but that that's just my personal link uh, it's it has nothing to do with uh, it was just a just a tool how to how to connect uh, to those feelings you know and uh, and uh, in the first place i wanted to write a book which would uh, which would activate people somehow, which would uh, force them to cope, uh, some, somehow to, to be there with those people for a minute or, or so and feel for them just for a while. And that was, that was the aim, I guess. We will get to this because I think one of the really good points of many uh, from your book is also that even though you speak about refugees, you are portraying it as a universal human uh, feeling, actually. But we will get to this. Um, we were now talking of this awful time transformation, accepting a couple of thousands of refugees in the past in Balkan Wars to accepting 12 refugees if they are Christians in the nowadays Czech Republic. But there is also really awful and horrible transformations uh, ha happening in, in the book itself, horrible, grotesque scenes, as you mentioned, like pushing people in, into this cause, uh, children basically raping the, the migrants, uh, to, to the more grotesque one of, um, of people, uh, volunteers, uh, offering uh, bottles of water to refugees, but photographing themselves with selfies and stuff. Um, this, of course, uh, of course, is fiction, but it's placed from the real world. And what is really interesting in your writing, besides the ma material fatigue, is also that you are really um, putting it in a, a really scripted scenario, like really. Uh, the documentarying everything. Uh, you did it, like for example, in uh, Santa Barbara, wh where you dis where you researched the story of a child abuse. Then, of course, also in your novel Mistake, uh, you took the the media the media scandal of two Czech scientists, right, uh, who stole a really uh, rare plant and tried to to smuggle it to Czech Republic. How was the process of writing and uh, researching the materials for material fatigue? Well, uh, I would say it was the most thorough uh, I, I have ever uh, undergone. Like, like it was it, it was inevitable to to uh, to talk to people and uh, and to to gather other materials but i uh, i very very um, in the very early stage of this process i realized i don't want to use any personal stories at all like like uh, i didn't want to be a documentarian or or a rep or, or or a journalist or whatever i wanted to because i realized uh, again like like how must uh, that feel like like that uh, someone came comes to you and uh, asks you to tell him the worst ever experience you probably have and uh, and uh, just to use it as a as a material for a novel which which is i, I suddenly f was struck by this because that's terrible that's uh, that's like scavenging you know and and uh, i didn't want to do that uh, so I just used those uh, interviews and things just as a as a as a sort of like to orientate myself in the situation and to feel the the, the those stories. But uh, the uh, outcome, the 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 story of the book is is fiction, hundred percent fiction, but based on absolutely reliable facts and uh, possible uh, situations and which actually ha uh, they, they ha uh, have uh, happened many times and uh, I also read uh, many of uh, medical uh, reports and so on and so on from refugee camps and from uh, because the most important thing and that was actually uh, the the then the idea of, of the title came to me, uh, the, the material fatigue, when I read uh, psychological reports from refugee camps, because the problem of those people, uh, it wasn't uh, money or, or 
whatever uh, it was it, it usually was depression and uh, and psychological uh, effects of of uh, of of those terrible things they they uh, came through and uh, the most uh, most precious thing in in those refugee cam camps were antidepressants and and benzodiazepines and so on and so on like uh, painkillers uh, to 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 uh, make you numb and uh, and uh, that's for me it was it was like that was one of the points when i realized how how terrible that that is because it wasn't about grown ups it was uh, about children uh, those those kids were uh, in desperate need of antidepressants because they their uh, instincts were damaged damaged uh, for the whole life probably because mm -hmm. when you slam the door uh, they would uh, they would uh, lie on the floor because uh, because they they that those instincts of, of uh, you know to, to survive were somehow reshaped uh, in in the war in in Syria and so on and so on, which which for me was uh terrible terrible like like uh, and and uh, then i then i somehow got uh, those uh evidence uh, uh, this evidence of, of how how for example in the refugee camps the organ trafficking uh you know uh, pro uh, proliferate uh in during those those uh those those uh, hundreds of thousands of people flooding those camps so so many uh, many uh, many people uh, were willing to sell a kidney uh, or even a, an eye because of the iris uh, to to get some money to continue on the journey which uh, for me it's it's really terrible and we are uh, in a way responsible for this because it was in turkey it was also in lebanon but especially in turkey in those huge camps which were were uh, like a part of the deal uh, with uh, of European Union with the Turkey, uh, it, it's happening there. So, so we are in a way responsible because we uh, we had this deal to to keep those people uh, um, in front of our borders. You know, so so that's for me. It's full of full of those ornaments and things, and it's it's suffering in a, in a really huge scale and those people are, are, are lost and are still there to, today they're still there and uh, they're even the me media forget them you know which is in a way said uh, maybe maybe uh, it's better for their image because people some somehow forget to scare them but uh, to be scared of them but uh, but uh, now now i feel they're completely abandoned <laughs> which is which is strange yeah this is also what i wanted to ask to ask you basically of course in 2015 to 2016 17 the refugee crisis was all over the media and all of a sudden now it's completely disappeared from the media as they don't exist and we know about the the refugee camps in greece in horrible conditions during the pandemic and we are of course privileged now we are talking over over zoom um, in warm places and stuff waiting for the the the, the vaccine um, but their stories completely disappeared uh, how do you, how does it ma make you feel this does it haunts you in a way because i'm asking this also with your your novel mistake you re rewrote it or you redesigned it will you do it the, uh, with the um, the same with with this book uh, hopefully not it was uh, it was a terrible thing to to uh, you know rewriting your own book it was it was a nightmare but uh, um, maybe uh, it would uh, it would be a good thing to write something about uh, uh, situation nowadays. How, how because uh, there are many paradoxical situations. Like, like uh, when they, when those people had all the at attention of of, uh, of the media, it was in a way uh, good for them because uh, many people were, uh, you know, uh, somehow subscribed for the for the organizations who took care of the refugee camps and so on and so on so it was good this attention in a way 
it was uh, on the other hand it was also this this fear mongering and so on and so on of course this this infotainment how how to uh, you know do, it was crazy like in in the Czech Republic especially because we we really uh, the when when the book came out the uh, first and the the most usual question was during debates and readings was have you seen a refugee like like people were were uh, which was funny because then when you when I presented it uh, then in Belgium and Netherlands th this question would never uh, occur to like like that that's absurd of course anybody seen has seen an, a refugee and that's that's the problem of the Czech Republic because we were dealing with ghosts you know and uh, and uh, when uh, I think people in France and in uh, Netherlands and in in other countries they they're aware the this this problem is still here of course because this those people live there uh, and you can see them uh, and and talk to them on in the streets and so on and so on but uh, in the Czech Republic uh, since media dropped this this subject it was gone it was like a, it evaporated and and uh, and like it was never like it has had never existed like like mm -hmm. that, that that was strange thing and and uh, that's the reason why in the book is uh, so uh, a, a big attention uh, given to to um, um, this this phenomenon of of uh, taking images of tourists of of media of taking pictures with uh, with refugees and so on because that's that's us like mm -hmm. somehow that, that's what what we do with those uh, terrible situations uh, you know which which uh, for a while are shaping uh, our our lives and then are gone like like it was never here that, that's strange i don't know for me it's i'm a little bit scared because uh, that's how that's how you manipulate manipulate people, uh, and you can uh, direct them whichever direction you want. Like like uh, uh, you can scare them to death, and then use this uh, atmosphere to your uh, your you know um, yeah some 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 sorry uh, some some your aims to, to, and 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 so on and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's. What I really like uh, about your book, while you were mentioning, like putting these reflections to the society, to the reader, because we are responsible for this, uh, you are doing it mostly uh, through the physical experience. While reader is already entering the book, you put it in the world of like almost a video game. We are getting to know the environment, we are basically gasping for the air with the protagonist. Um, we are sharing the fear and their feelings uh, on the unknown territory. Um, I'm interested, how was the response from the readers in Czech Republic? Because this is really important. I'm also curious how the response will be in Slovenia, for example, because we also were on the refugee road, route. Um, but I'm firstly, of course, firstly, I'm interested about the reception with Czech. And secondly, I know that the book was also translated and published in Syria. So I'm also uh, really interested in their reception because it's a different culture in a way. Yeah, well, uh, the, the reception of the book was uh, very, like, let's say mixed up. It was uh, uh, some people and it was uh, to be ex like, like to be expected, like, like said that I just want to use this as a, you know, some some uh, to, to somehow parasite on the uh, actual topic, which, okay, I, I was prepared for, for those type of questions, but uh, as I said, uh, it was almost inevitable to uh, not, I, I needed to do this book. It was, it was uh, almost physical urge and, uh, and uh, the, uh, some people refused the book completely because of its, uh, let's say, claustrophobic uh, features. Because uh, there are several chapters and uh, and uh, passages which are almost unbearable. And it happened that uh, during some uh, reading in public, uh, a lady uh, excused herself and leave, 
uh, and left the, the the reading because she said she 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 can't bear it because she had problem with claustrophobia. So so and I I, uh, I uh, apologized to her because you know it was it was not not very pleasant. But uh, but that's the book that that's what I actually wanted to do uh, to to engage people to to force them almost to be there and uh, to uh, to feel with my uh, protagonists feel their heartbeats breathe with them and uh, if uh, if they uh, if they have uh, you know some some bodily uh, sensations experiences to be with them there in the situation and uh, i was always interested in how literature is actually capable of doing this uh, to to grab you and uh, and uh, drag you inside like someone else's skin almost like to to, to and you can also very uh, effectively somehow imitate bodily functions bodily bodily processes and so on and so on because language itself when you speak you have to coordinate it with breath, uh, breath and uh, with uh, with other things and so so it's there in in, in language itself it's uh, it's a bodily process also speaking and and uh, so so for me it Oh, in the beginning, when I started writing the book, I also I was searching for a proper language for it because the language itself is is very, um, let's say, claustrophobic and uh, in a way unpleasant. I I, I had this idea uh, of uh, uh, rather short sentences but very detailed. Like like uh, I, I I immediately knew that, that 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 there would be a very uh, it, it would be focused on details very much, like almost on the on the on the edge of, of uh, uh, like like in a way it uh, it sometimes it could be unbearable like this those all those hisses and noises and and any any single snowflake uh, you know hitting the ground is is audible and uh, that was my aim like like to create a. a hostile environment in a way where everything is visible sensible and uh, and in a way painful like any sound like like, like uh, it's it's something like uh, turning the volume up uh, on a slightly uh, un, you know the, the, to a degree where things started starting to be distorted like 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 this this thing like like that, that was my aim and suddenly Immediately when I when I discovered this uh, this strategy, this language, and this rhythm, uh, then it would then it was uh, rather easy because it's it's uh, it's it's an energy which which uh, drives you to continue and so on and so. On. Yeah. Um, I don't know if uh, if I answered the question. Sorry. <laughs> you did. You did, and you also brought. Uh... A really important um, theme in your your writing, uh, not theme, a uh, style in your writing. You're describing the most horrible scenes, as we already mentioned, the the rape of migrants, uh, children, full of hatred, mocking the migrants, uh, with a really poetical language, in a way full of metaphors, full of symbolism. And also when we were talking about uh, this situation that um, the language and literature is reflecting to the society, uh, is offering the reflection to the reader. Of course, it is engaged literature, but as mentioned in, in, in uh, previous uh, questions, you're also building it in a really universal experience, as well as, as you're using the metaphor of Europe in the end, when Europe is actually a machine, that we are all numbers, that we are dehumanized, uh, just a bare numbers. And um, I'm wondering uh, in what way were you thinking of like building this metaphorical language to actually uh, extract these uh, personal stories to a bigger level of universal experience. Well, uh, that's that's a great 
question and thank you for for that because uh, that was one of my uh, well, one of my concerns not to make it like just a political statement or something. I, I wanted to write really something universal, uh, and uh, that's why the 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 main protagonist, the the boy, he doesn't have a name. He's he's just a boy, just just a boy wandering through the landscape and. And of course, you uh, sooner or later you realize uh, you realize uh, that the reader realized that uh, that uh, realizes that the, uh, he is a refugee and and so on and so all those labels uh, arrives. But but uh, uh, in the first place, I wanted to 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 say a story, to tell a story about the. Uh, uh, um, person a human being completely isolated of all all those uh, all the civilization all those gadgets and and things which surround uh, surround us and uh, and this is i i guess uh, a universal uh, thing and and a universal fear to be be such an such an in such an isolation uh, to be as such to be an outcast of, of the society, and uh, for me it was in a way interesting uh, when uh, when two in two thousand fifteen and sixteen uh, how people uh, in Czech Republic and and in other European countries they they were uh, longing for isolation in a way you know that they there were those sentiments about uh, or, or like like proposals. To close the borders completely and to to fortify ourselves in this Euro or fortress of Europe or, or Czech Republic, fortress of the Czech Republic or whatever, but this is crazy because you know uh, the isolation itself is a is a is usually a punishment. It's it always has been a punishment. We put people in in jail, you know, to punish them. To we we. Put them in in a fortress and held uh, held them inside, and uh, so for me it was those two uh, types of isolations uh, somehow uh, put against each other. And in the book there there is those things when when uh, the the main protagonist is is just wandering through the landscape and trying to orientate himself and find trying to find a map and uh, in the best uh, possible uh, would be to find a, a, a cell phone because he doesn't have one but uh, uh, on the other hand there is this he's, he's inside the fortress in the fortress of Europe and uh, which which is uh, very hostile towards him and so so I uh, I just wanted to write something which would uh, uh, somehow somehow portray europe from outside like from uh, from the perspective of those people who are on the other side of all those fences we, which we have around us and and uh, so so for me it was uh, again uh, the the whole book the setup is uh, it's the whole journey of the main character is on he, he's traveling on outskirts of Europe, all, all those suburbs and then the uh, brown fields and so on and so on. So so that was it's like uh, it's like the wrong side of Europe. He he he's uh, in in a chap in a chapter there. He he just uh, he he has uh, he says that he saw some pictures of, of all those cities of those uh, uh, stone bridges and, and old buildings but but he's uh, confused where are they because it's all just just steel cold steel and metal and and frost and and just empty places and and uh, and uh, collapsing new buildings and so on and so on like 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 uh, Closed the uh, shopping malls and so on and so on, so so that was like like uh, yeah one of uh, one of the important factors of the atmosphere of the book uh, for me, um, mm -hmm. and uh, I hope I hope uh, that uh, the book will and uh, 
because a month ago it was published in French translation and, and uh, it's uh, again it, it, the nice and interesting debate uh, like like uh, took place after after the book came out about how how the situation is today and uh, so for me it was also and it was great interesting and somehow somehow it was uh, freer than uh, when when the book was published in the Czech Republic mm -hmm. when people were almost you know th this was like a red flag uh, such a such a subject but today it's more calm more thorough uh, and uh, it for me it's a signal that the book will survive probably that, that it's not yeah that, that it will be here and probably uh, you know, it it won't be outdated uh, just because uh, media dropped the the, the subject. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. It seemed that you're combining uh, two two situations really well together. We were now talking about these horrible scenes, but also in your book there are a lot of act of solidarities, for example. We were also talking about the Europe that refugees see as uh, basically a paradise and then they're coming to suburbs like a uh, land full of uh, cult metal and stuff like that. Um, also, there is a, a really, really um, a scene of extreme solidarity in the book when um, when the boy meets a homeless man in one of the the ha suburban houses which is abandoned and said to him he was also alone like he's thinking of this he's also alienated so that's why i personally think that this book of course will survive the time also when we are now in the time of eco crisis refugee will always be a thing also for the future generations um, but while we are talking about combining poetical uh, language, horrible, really dark scenes, um, also the end of the book, it is somehow really interested, interesting. It is open end, but in the end you also end with the main protagonist playing a video game. So basically it's a symbolistical end. Uh, and I would like to ask you about this end, how you, you actually thought of it. And the second question, of course, naturally, is how you see the end of this? Like, how do you picture this um, fortress, fortress Europe, Europe in, in the, the future? future. <laughs> well, uh, the, the, very, uh, the ending of the book is uh, that's the typical question because people uh, are sometimes they are confused with it. Sometimes they, they it it uh, and I'm happy it uh, you know it raises uh, or, or somehow uh, it it uh, it makes the book uh, to live longer because uh, I I didn't uh, intend it to uh, this chapter to be the ending of the book. I, I actually had uh, some some other. You know, plans to 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 it it uh, it sh should continue for a while, but when I finished this chapter, uh, I immediately knew that this is the end uh, of the book. This is the image I wanted to be, like on the very uh, very uh, climax of the whole story, and uh, and uh, because it's open, it's it's uh, and I laugh. Uh, I love books which uh, enable readers to somehow to cooperate, to to you know uh, somehow invest something from themselves, from themselves uh, in in the text, like like uh, to decipher it in their own way. So this is this is like a, an offer to to create to to tell to finish the story somehow to tell what what will happen th that morning when the bo boy uh, played the video game which we which uh, he is pretty much aware of he he knew the game he he played it with his brother and uh, so this is their final meeting probably and uh, and there is this strange sadness in, in the and and the peace inside the game like in uh, somewhere in, in an artificial world and for me it was 
full of meanings, full of things I didn't want to explain any further. I, I wanted to be them, uh, those things to be there, but let let people uh, to to judge and and uh, you know and think and and uh, and uh, make schemes what what will happen and so on and so on. So I love this this cooperation and uh, or this this possible cooperation like like when when uh, when when a book breathes and and uh, is is somehow trans transient and and uh, and uh, can can uh, you know a, a reader can roam through it somehow that's 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 what i love uh, and 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 that's the reason why i decided to to leave it like like it is and and uh, so that's for the ending. And what was the second part of the question? The second part, of course, with this combining the artificial uh, and human emotion, what do you personally see for the future? Like, for example, as well, one of the things in, in your book is, of course, technology. And we are now isolated in the situation when we are isolated. So how do you, in a way, as a good observer of society, see the future of Fortress Europe? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, um, I used to be very skeptical about this, but uh, after the book came out, I actually uh, experienced many uh, surprising uh, encounters and, and uh, let's say, debates. But uh, sometimes it happened uh, that uh, very angry people came to my readings, for example, people who were absolutely against uh, refugees and whatever. and. Uh, and sometimes it was almost like they uh, wanted to fight me or, or uh, I don't know. And and uh, it happened once or twice and it was beautiful that we were able to to find a common ground. Like, like uh, during the deb debate, which uh, wasn't actually very pleasant, but uh, gradually it, it like just revealed that we, we uh, didn't we need to speak about those things we need to share them and and uh, and that i i especially one in one occasion i i ended shaking hands with with a guy who who was very in the first place he 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 was very angry with me but but in the end he apologized me even apologized me for sending some hate mails very uh, very rude and uh, I was okay with that because he was also brave. He came personally and uh, s spoke to me personally, and uh, and that was almost touching. Like like we suddenly feel that that that's that's it. We we just can we just need to speak uh, and talk about things uh, with each other, and that's great. That was great outcome. So I'm not that skeptical any longer. <laughs> so basically, building the dialogue, we have to work on empathy and understanding each other, the other. Um, Marek, thank you so much for this conversation and I'm really looking forward to meet you at Festival Fabula. Thank you very much. <laughs>